Chapter 41, A Mage Upgrade Drawing a formation on the rocks was going to be hard work, so Rays decided to walk closer to the stream of water where the pebbles had turned into a type of sand. Doing everything with the stick, he felt a sense of calmness come over him. This reminds me of my old life, Rays thought. I would often have to hide out in the middle of nowhere away from the eyes of others. The sound of water flowing, it's quite soothing. With the direction I'm going, it might not be a long time until I'm on the run again. The formation had finished. Sitting down inside the magic circle he had drawn, he took out one of the crystals from his robe and activated the magic. The crystals would then slowly dissolve as they entered through Ray's pores and went into his magic core. Once he had finished with one crystal, he would then move on to the next, doing the same thing. It was best to do them one at a time. That way, the core was able to grow bit by bit, expand it too fast, and it could explode, killing the mage on the spot. There were many dealers in Alterian that would offer special tools to help enhance one's strength. Some of them would destroy the magic core completely, killing the mage, while others, although they would get a boost in strength, would then become reliant on the tools. They were worse than cursed items. They would give a slight rise in power, but then a larger downfall, making them weaker than they would have been if they never used the tools in the first place. Rays continued to absorb another crystal as memories flashed through his head. He had seen a number of people who had been affected by these items, including one that he would have once called a friend. And the one behind the distribution of these tools, Gizen, one of the five Grand Magus, no one would ever have suspected it, and it's one that no one would believe, no matter how hard I tried to get the message out. 1N After absorbing the eighth crystal, it was right then Rays could feel it in his chest. The magic core had thumped and expanded slightly in size. The outer shell had hardened inside him and was beginning to crack. Arrgh! His hand gripped the area around his chest, and dark magic started to swirl all around his body. It was erratic, hitting the pebbles nearby, crashing into the water around him. A faint purple glow covered his body until his core completely cracked. It shattered on the inside, and the magic from his body exploded, pushing all of the rocks and the water back. Rays was on his knees, gasping for air. When he went to breathe in, he could feel it. The energy felt cooler as it entered his body. His sense of smell cleared up, and just with the touch on his skin, he could feel not only the wind, but the energy that flowed through it. It was as if the world that was covered in clouded colors had now become a lot clearer. I did it, I did it. Ray's smile was nearly reaching his eyes. I finally became a two-star mage. The amount of mana I can control has increased. I am no longer limited by the attribute cap, and with more mana, it allows me to cast even more spells. Looking deep within himself, Ray's could tell the core was now more reinforced. The magic core worked similarly to fractures in a human bone. Through the crystals, it would chip away with magic, allowing it to regrow and come back stronger. Then, when the outer shell finally broke and a new one was in its place, that's when one would have reached the next star level. There were multiple ways to do this, but the quickest by far was using the crystals found within the beasts. Now there was an issue I had to face, though. These level 1 power stones, as they call them here, can only increase a mage's star level to level 2 at most. Now, if I want to go to the next stage, I will need higher grade power stones. To do that, I could try and open a different portal or explore deeper in the one I already opened. I could also go to another clan. If I went with others, it would be safer. There was safety in numbers, especially in places that others had been to before. He was sure clans would have rules for Pagna warriors using the portals they had access to. The main problem was that Rays used magic to kill beasts, and he wouldn't be able to use that with others around. I still have six power stones to myself now. Since they're useless for increasing my mana, I can use them for other things. For mages, sometimes it was the number of items that would help one win a battle, not just one's power. In a way, rare items and enchanted items were one's power. It was time for him to head back to the temple, otherwise he would never get some sleep. But he was excited for the next morning, 
because that's when he would have a look and give a go at learning the gift he had been given. Looking at the area around him, it was a complete mess, with the pebbles and sand having blown everywhere. It was a good thing that no one came out here. Walking back through the forest, Rays headed toward the temple. In the same area where Rays was, sparks were occurring. They were like little shocks of electricity in the air, appearing for a few seconds before disappearing. Eventually, a small glowing portal had opened up and small black tentacles had shot out, wriggling all over in the air, trying to reach for something. The portal quickly closed back up, and the tentacles disappeared as well, but the sparks of electricity continued on for a few moments more before stopping. Chapter 42 A New Energy Safa had woken up, and when she turned her head, as usual, Rays was still in a deep sleep. She pressed her hand on her chest and let out a big sigh of relief. She didn't know why, but she just felt that maybe one of these days, she would wake up and he would no longer be by her side. When she stood up, she could feel a slight breeze in the air around them. It felt almost fresh, and sniffing it in through her nostrils, it was almost like consuming a strong mint. It had supercharged her for the day. Leaving the room, she had done so with a smile on her face, and went ahead to join the others. Your brother's still asleep, I see, Kron said. Well, I suppose his weak body does need more rest than most. As long as you are happy to do his and your work for the upkeep of both of you, then I won't stop you. Safa pumped her fist as she was ready to help out in the kitchen and cleaning. She was trying her best to help out her brother in whatever ways she could. This way, he could sleep in longer than the others. When Reyes eventually woke up, he could see that Safa had already left. I guess that means they're not too bothered about me sleeping in. Otherwise, Kron would have come and woken me up himself. Taking a peek outside of his door, he could hear everyone talking as they were eating breakfast. From the sounds of things, they had just been setting the table. Breakfast would usually take an hour, so he predicted he had an hour before someone would check up on him. Sitting back down in his room, Rays activated his robe from his clothing and then pulled out the cultivation manual. He sat cross-legged as he opened the book and started to flick through the pages. I'm not sure why, but every mention of the technique's name has been scratched or rubbed out throughout the book. I have a feeling that what I'm about to learn might not be something he was meant to give out, Ray's thought. Owen. Instead of being disheartened, though, Ray's had a large smile. Since when did he stop himself from learning new things because of that? Reading through it, the steps were the same as the dark essence technique. The main differences, though, were the imagery that one had to have in their head when trying to draw the energy to their dantian. This one wanted the person to focus on the cycles, the feeling one gets when new life is born into this world, and the feeling of when life was taken away, the energy that is given when something is born, and the energy that is taken when a life is lost. This technique would be hard for most young people who have yet to experience these types of things, but I have seen this cycle firsthand many times. But there is one other thing it notes as well. In the manual, there were several times when it noted the importance of the location when using the technique. It works best in a place where any part of the cycle has occurred. So either where a lot of lives have come into this world or where death has been experienced multiple times. Just thinking about it, Rays was starting to feel that this technique was incredibly dangerous. Other than a hospital, it was hard for Rays to think of areas where new life would come into this world. However, death was easy to come by, and not only that, it was easy to make. One could use this technique on a battlefield of sorts, or if they really wanted to push it to its limits, they could create a den full of the dead. Pushing that thought to the side, it still didn't discourage Rays to learn the technique. His path was one that was planned to be paved in blood either way. Closing his eyes, he started to focus. He started with the steps that Mr. Kron had taught, breathing in through his nose, the energy around them. Rays had become quite good at this since he would do this whenever he got the chance with the dark essence technique to improve his dark attribute. After the first part was done, it was time for him to picture the imagery in his head. The air that he was taking in now was starting to change. 
it felt dark, not like that of the dark essence energy, but heavier in a sense. As the energy started to accumulate in his body, he noticed when it entered his body, unlike the dark essence, it didn't go to his mana core. It continued and went down past his belly button. The energy was starting to gather from deep within. Is it working? Is this it? Am I able to gather chi with this technique? The energy started to grow through Reza's body, and a ball was forming in his stomach, but something strange started to happen. After a solid ball had been made, somewhat like that of his magic core, the energy started to spread out. It was moving about, all over his body. He could feel it reacting with all of his muscles, cells, and it was almost fighting with himself. Ah! Ray's grunted with pain. The energy was going rampant. It felt like he was being hit from the inside. It wasn't just his muscles that were taking a beating from this energy, but even his organs. It felt like they were being twisted and pulled inside him, and he was finding it hard to breathe. Kuk! Ray's coughed, and blood came shooting out from his mouth. It wasn't a small amount, as a puddle of it was on the floor, but it wasn't red. The blood looked almost black in color. The energy continued to run rampant in his body, and that's when he could feel it was starting to head somewhere dangerous. Is it going for my mana core? Is it going for my heart? Shrouded heart, Ray's activated the spell in fear for his life. Chapter 43. A New Person After the energy had created a solid base in what Ray's assumed was his Dantian, the energy started to spread throughout his body, and now it felt like it was ripping him from the inside out. The dark, almost black-colored blood was quite the sign to say that he was probably right, and when he could see it going for his heart next, he needed to act fast. Shrouded Heart, the skill that used up all his mana to create a shield around his mana core, which was linked to the heart in the first place. Rays could feel the energy trying to attack it, almost as if it was alive. However, the skill shrouded heart was pushing it away. It continued to hit, and he could feel his whole body shaking. Cook, cook! Ray's continued to cough, and blood was flung out of his mouth violently. It wasn't just being coughed out, but was being propelled all over the place. Am I going to die? Breakfast had ended for the children, and with them busy putting away the plates and washing up, Kron had decided that he would wake up Ray's. Although it was important that he rested, it was also important that he didn't miss a meal. Owen. <sighs> Turning his head, noise could be heard, and it was coming right from Ray's room. Is it an assassin? I thought we were safe in the temple, and with no incidents happening so far, I let my guard down. Kron sprinted right to the room and slid the door open, with his fist ready to go up against anything that was inside. But instead, he soon lowered his fist. What in the heavens happened in here? Kron said. Simeon, walking by, could see the teacher standing there still. He decided to take a peek into the room, and he almost fell to his knees. What is all that? Is that blood? The entire room was covered in blood. The flooring had splatters of the dark substance, the walls from left to right, and even the ceiling was covered in it. It looked as if someone had splattered buckets of paint all over the place. It was hard to even believe that a person had so much blood in their body. However, what Kron's eyes had been drawn like a magnet to was the boy sitting in the center of the room on his own. His body was shivering once in a while. It was shaking, his eyes were sunken, his pupils barely visible as they looked to be closed. His mouth was open and he was repeatedly mumbling the same words over and over again. I will not die. I will not die. I've never seen such a strong will to live before, Kron thought. His presence, it is like that of a dangerous beast. Even I was too afraid to get close. Snapping out of it, Kron acted quickly as he turned around and could see Simeon. Make sure no one goes into this room. It's off limits. In the meantime, I'm going to let Ray's take your room. Rushing over, Kron lifted Ray's, holding him in a cradling position with his two hands, and rushed him to Simeon's room. He then placed Ray's on the bed and shut the door behind him. Ray's, can you hear me? Is everything okay? Can you still feel the energy in your body? Kron asked. He could see Ray's lips moving. He was no longer saying the same words, but sounded as if he had said something else. Pressing his head closer, Kron could eventually hear what Ray's said. Don't. Touch. Ray's managed to let out before passing out completely. Some time had passed, 
and Reyes was able to open his eyes again. The first thing he realized was how comfortable he felt as his back was up against something relatively soft and how much closer the ceiling looked. Wait, why am I lying down? Wasn't I cultivating from that manual before? And then I used shrouded heart. But I'm alive. You're awake, Kron said, sitting in a chair that was just by Reyes's side. You can keep resting for a while, but if I'm correct in my thinking, you won't feel like you need to. The comments confused Reyes. He had just been through a torturous session with his own body and was constantly spewing blood. How could he feel fine? I do feel fine. I feel absolutely fine. No, I feel better the end fine. When breathing, there didn't feel like a foot was on top of his chest. His body, it felt more responsive than before, something that he didn't even think was possible, and even his own body composition, the muscles seemed fuller and larger. Finally, he could feel it. His magic core was still there and in his stomach, there was the basis of chi. Right now, you might be extremely confused, and you have every right to be, Kron explained. What your body went through was something similar to a cleanse. It was getting rid of all of the impurities in your body. But it wasn't a normal cleanse. Every muscle in your body, to your very bones, even your organs, it was getting rid of everything that affects our body in day-to-day -day life, what harms the cells that make up all of our body. That black blood that spewed out from your body, that was you going through the cleanse. It was black in color because it was everything bad that your body didn't need. The only thing was, you had an extremely abnormal amount. I've never seen someone have so many impurities in their body before. Hearing what Kron was saying and feeling the effects on his body, he could only believe that what he was saying was true right now. Does this mean I have chi now and I can learn martial arts? Reyes asked. Kron chuckled. The difference between a regular civilian and a Pagna warrior are the impurities in their body. Now that your body has gotten rid of all of this, it's now stronger, can move faster, and last longer. You are almost a superhuman compared to them. Reyes, what you just went through isn't just someone who has learned to use chi. You are now officially a stage one Pagna warrior. Chapter 44. New Strength. The two were just in disbelief as they looked at each other over their words, but what Reyes had been through was something that only first-stage Pagna warriors went through. Those at the Red Brigade, just like at the temple, would learn how to use chi, and when a core was established enough, it would get rid of the impurities from one's body, allowing them to reach the first stage. This was also the requirement for one to enter the Pagna Academy, and that's why everyone coming from a clan or respectable family trained so hard to reach this stage. I'm at the first stage. You're saying not only have I learned to use chi, but I'm beyond even that? How is it possible for me to have skipped so many steps? Reyes asked. The only thing I can think of is the chi pill I gave you. It perhaps was far more effective than we realized, and as you said, your body was just taking a long time to heal, Kron answered. Another reason is perhaps because of the large amount of impurities in your body. The more impurities in one's body, the more energy needed to expel it. For you, there was only one option of jumping from one stage to the other because you weren't able to exert next to no strength, and you weren't able to slowly get rid of these impurities. So a mass amount of chi is needed, which is why I gave you the pill. There was also something else that Kron didn't mention. Originally, he thought that Reyes couldn't learn martial arts or make a base for chi because his body was already filled with dark or light energy. One would call this a yin or a yang body. However, with all the black blood that was spilt and forced out of his body, he now knew the real reason. It was due to the impurities, but Reyes's case was extremely rare. If a chi base was able to forcefully be established and rid the body of everything impure, then it would also go for the heart as well. In nearly all cases, where there was one with a body like Reyes's, they would end up dead, and there were only a few cases where this hadn't happened. Those people had gone on to be known as irregulars, disrupting the world of Panya. Little did Reyes know that if he hadn't used the skill Shrouded Heart, he would be dead. Reyes couldn't help but continue to move his hand through the air in amazement. It was so easy, feeling next to no resistance at all. When was the last time he could ever do this? In his past life, he always wondered if he would live to the next day, 
worrying about food on the table. When he got older, food wasn't the problem, but all the self-experiments he had done on his own body had made him live in pain almost every day of his life. Then when transferring to this new body, it wasn't exactly the best. That was until now. Damn, you have managed to give me a great gift beyond what you can imagine, Ray smiled. Kron was still sitting there in disbelief as he looked at Ray's. It was only a few days ago that he was talking to Sonny about what to do. If Ray's wasn't able to get into the academy when he turned 16, he wouldn't be able to protect himself, and with the way things were going, it would have been impossible. Later on, Ray's was out of his bed and had consumed everything on his plate that they gave him for breakfast and lunch. When he met the others, all of them could tell there was a noticeable difference. For one, his skin was glowing more vibrant than before. He was no longer slouched when eating, and even his muscles on his body appeared to bulge fuller compared to before. Other than his face, it was hard to tell that the two were the same person. There wasn't a single thing left on Ray's plate, and he was also eating what was left on others' plates. Kron couldn't help but smile as this was just more proof that his body had essentially evolved, and now it needed fuel to work. For the rest of the day, Ray's task was cleaning up the room that he had ruined with his own blood. He had a bucket and a cloth, and was working hard away. However, he didn't find it hard work at all. If anything, he was enjoying the fact that he could do the task without rest. Finally, for the first time since he had joined the temple, he was looking forward to the afternoon training that was to take place. When they were outside, the twins were in charge of the normal running routine, and Ray's went right ahead to the front. He kept up with them, continuing to run more and more. Even when they sped up, he didn't fall behind. When the twins finally stopped, everyone was huffing and panting, and only a small sweat had broken out on Ray's. Oh one, this is it, this is what it feels like to experience youth again, Ray smiled. When one transmigrates to a new body, they expect something like this. What happened to your brother? Simeon asked. He's become a monster overnight. How is it even possible? I mean, was he just hiding everything before? No, his whole body's changed as well. Safa shook her head because she really had no clue either. Looking at Ray's condition, there was clearly a secret behind it all. I have to ask him at some point. I just need to find the right time. As they went through the rest of the lesson, it was finally time for them all to hit the measuring pillar. Each person hit it well, with many staying on the same score. Safa was in good enough condition to hit it again, and surprisingly, her score had raised to 26. She now had the highest score out of all those at the temple, including if Gren was still here as well. It's not so much that her chi has improved, but more so she has no hesitation when throwing out her fists. Has she improved since the incident with Gren? It was clear that Safa was a once-in-a-hundred-years talent. Next to come to the pillar was Ray's. He got in his fighting stance, and there was no need for Kron to inform him what to do next. Let's see. Let's see how much I've improved. The two-step shift was performed perfectly and was filled with energy. The chi was raised from his stomach and exploded out of his fist into the pillar until the final numbers had appeared. Whoa! The kids were in awe. It was the first time they had witnessed such a leap. They didn't even know such improvement was possible. Just like that, the record for the strongest in the temple had been beaten, but Ray's excitement couldn't be contained. This is the strength of my punch now, so just how strong would the dark strike be now? Chapter 45, A Tide is Coming It turned out, despite his new body, Ray's was more exhausted than he thought, and that was just in general due to the lack of sleep he had been going through the last few nights. From what he had heard from the others, the higher the stage a Pagna warrior was, the less sleep one would need. Hopefully in the future, if he could continue to grow the way he had been doing, then it was something he didn't have to worry about. After a good night's sleep, Ray's had been called into a meeting with Kron in his office once again. You should be careful calling me in for one-on-one -on -one so often. Otherwise, people will think you might be grooming me, Ray's joked as he sat down. Grooming? Kron replied, not understanding the context of it all. The other kids might get jealous, Ray's said, trying to go past the joke he had made. 
Ah, I see. Jealousy is natural in all nature, Kron replied. In fact, I would say when children are jealous, it's more a form of honesty, but adults get far more jealous than children, and their actions for attempting to deal with such a thing can be far more severe. Kron didn't have to tell Ray's twice. He knew how strong of an emotion jealousy was, especially when that emotion was placed within a person who had never been told no in his life. That was a dangerous combination. I have no doubt, after your display of strength on the pillar, that you are a stage one warrior now, Kron declared. And honestly, you are talented to the point that if you stay here, your progress will stagnate. Which is why I wanted to ask you, before attempting for the academy, would you like to join the disciples of the Red Brigade clan? Thinking back, Reyes remembered when he had walked past. He saw the disciples there, and how skilled they were. They were also already learning a lot more than just the two-step shift. Joining the clan also meant that one would be allowed access to the skills of the clan that could only be taught to clan members. It also meant loyalty to that group of people as well. Although it would be nice to learn more martial arts techniques, the Red Brigade clan is small, and it would limit me, Ray's thought, and a picture of Dame appeared in his head, as well as Beatrix. These two had to have come from far greater clans than the Red Brigade. Through my relationship with Dame, I have the chance of obtaining better and more powerful skills. Besides, there are more people there that would keep me under greater watch than here. The answer was clear for Ray's. I'm sorry, but I don't wish to join the Red Brigade clan, Ray's answered. If I was to join, being the only stage one in the temple, then I would have to go by myself, which means my sister wouldn't be able to join me, and I wish to stay by my sister's side, wherever she is. This answer was an excuse, but a believable one to put across, and judging by Kron's nod, he seemed to buy it. I understand, but if you ever change your mind, then feel free to speak to me, Kron said. Just before he was about to get up, Reyes did have a question he wanted to ask. Sir, is it possible? Can I head into town? There is no need for you to come with me, but I would like to explore a bit more. With my body the way it is now, I might even wish to get a job to earn some coin for myself. Things should be fine that I'm now a rank one warrior, right? Things certainly wouldn't be fine, considering the people after him might be higher rank than that, but the situation would be the same regardless if he was to leave him for another year, and Kron still remembered the words that Reyes had spoken to him before. I have already agreed that I won't stop you from doing as you wish while you stay here. Kron answered, You can treat this as your home until you turn sixteen, and as long as you earn your keep around the temple, I have no objections to what you do. Reyes bowed down as he was ready to leave. With the six crystals he had, it was time for him to make a few more items and potions for himself as well. He needed to be ready for his next horai, unt, now that he was a two-star mage. I'm starting to like you a bit, Kron. You have a good nature, Ray's thought as he left the room. Just don't betray my trust. At the same time, in the town itself, at the Red Brigade base, a meeting was taking place in the head elder's room. The head elder, Jan, was sitting at his desk, looking at the two newcomers inside. He had just received a report from the two of them, and it wasn't the news he had been expecting. Your group, the Alters, was recommended by a dear friend of mine, so I had put my trust in you to find out the root of our problem, Jan said. However, none of the cases of the dead families have yet to be resolved, and there have been sightings of portals, although no sign of a portal break. N. N. The large man stepped forward, bowing down. He moved his overcoat to the side, as it dragged on the floor a bit before lifting his head back up, and then gave the side eye to his orange haired companion by his side. She bowed down after placing her hands on her beret hat so it wouldn't fall down. I apologize for that. The case is far more tricky than we thought, Himmy answered. If a portal break did occur, then we would know about it, but we have searched and have found no open portals in the area. As for the other problem, we recently heard that there was a survivor in one of the cases. If we could speak to him about what he knew, then maybe that would help us. Chapter 46, Problems and Money, is one of them. Reaching the town was a lot easier this time compared to the last. 
the long winding staircase that went through the thick forest, he had descended with ease, and even now, as he walked, looking around, he wasn't out of breath. He was better at observing his surroundings as he would move and weave, avoiding the people next to him, not bumping into them like the last time he had visited the place. Eventually, Reyes had stopped at a building he had been to once before. One of the major issues I have is the fact that I have these crystals that are like a bar of gold, yet it's impossible for me to sell on my own. How am I meant to get more items that are needed? The place he had stopped in front of was the pawn shop, the same pawn shop he had visited last time. Although it had been a long time since he had visited the place, there was still the chance that no one had found out about the incident, and if that was the case, there would be no harm in him borrowing a few items from inside. To his surprise, the sign on the front door stated, Open. Open? How is that possible? I didn't hallucinate about what happened last time, did I? Ray's thought. His curiosity was great, and he wanted to open the door, but considering what had happened last time, he thought it was best if he left it be. Walking away, he couldn't help but think about how strange it was. Was there no investigation? I mean, I can understand if the business was bought out and changed, maybe it was taken over by another family member. Or it could be some type of trap. They do say that criminals always return to the scene of the crime. Inside the shop, working behind the counter, was the large man in the brown overcoat. Himmy had been using it as a base of operations of sorts in the meantime and had gotten permission from the Red Brigade to look after it for now. As for the deaths of the two, they truly did have no family and friends. No one missed them, and when old customers returned, stating that the two had run away, everyone was quick to believe that fact. Continuing his walk, Rays had entered an open market. There were stalls that were packed tightly together in rows, selling a number of different things. One would sell food, another clothing, while being stationed right next to weapons. It was a mix and match of all sorts. It was also one of the best places to get a bargain. Maybe I could do some odd jobs for one of the stalls in return for an item or two. Stopping at a jewelry store, Rays was looking at all of the objects that had been made from stones found all across the continent. Jewelry was good for a mage to enchant since they could wear multiple pieces. One had ten fingers but didn't have ten pairs of trousers to switch in between fights. Of course, there was a limit to how many magical items one could use. Otherwise, one would have mages pierced in every section possible, although he did know a mage with a Prince Albert once. And... Sigh. N. Rays looked at the woman behind the counter. She looked fairly old and was covered in her jewelry, most likely ones she had made herself. Feel free to take a look at whatever you want, young man, the woman said. I made most of these myself, while some have been traded and shared with as well. What Rays was looking for was a high-quality item. The materials, as well as who crafted it, was what made the quality of the item better. With this, the effect of enchanting an item with cursed magic would increase, and he wouldn't have to rely on finding a higher-level power stone. The thing was, high-quality items for aesthetic reasons and high-quality items for a mage were completely different. The easiest way to tell if an item was high quality for a mage was to use magic. Rays lifted his hand and hovered it over each item, and as he did, he activated a small amount of magic in his palm, touching the item ever so softly. The item would then vibrate in response. The more it vibrated, the easier it was to enchant into a higher level item. The show, Keeper was keeping a keen eye on Rays, perhaps thinking he would steal and run off with the items but with how small the amount of magic he used, it would be next to impossible for one to tell what he was doing unless they were a mage. Continuing to do this with each item, nearly all of them were of poor quality until he had reached a rounded black-colored earring. It looked like a ring one would put on their finger, but based on the sharp pointed ends, it clearly was an earring. Hitting it with magic, it started to vibrate, even moving the box it was in slightly. How much for the black earring? Rays asked. That? She peeked over her display. Are you sure you don't want any of the other items? That one is quite dull looking compared to the rest. I'm sure of it, Rays replied. The woman clicked her teeth. 
It was quite clear that the earring didn't match the style of the other items, so it wasn't something she had made, and most likely it was traded, which was why she was disappointed. The ring goes for ten coppers, no less, no more, I don't haggle, the woman said. Often at the temple, Kron would teach the younger children how to read, write, and also a few general things about the world. The currency in Pagna mostly relied on coins, and there were three types, copper, silver, and gold. There were some currencies above these, but Kron made it clear that they would never see these in their lifetime, so he didn't bother with teaching them. One hundred coppers were worth one silver, and twenty-five silver equaled one gold coin. To put that into perspective, a loaf of bread went between one to two copper coins, depending on the season or how much bread was produced. Although jewelry had a hefty price in his world, he found it hard to believe that there would be those willing to give up ten loaves of bread for an earring when there were plenty of people who looked underfed. And how much for one of these? Rays pointed at one of the more colorful earrings that were shining with purple decorations. Oh, you have good taste, that is two copper coins, she happily said with a large smile. It was without a doubt that right now he was getting scammed. Right now, he wanted to grab her face and slam it down into the display, but he had to tone down his anger. I don't even have two copper coins, never mind ten, so how am I going to do this? Ray's thought. The best way to word how he would be able to help her, he didn't want to pull out the power stone again, not unless he was willing to kill the store owner, which was starting to become a possibility in his head. Oh, if that young man isn't taking the black earring, I'll take it for ten coppers, a soft voice said. Turning his head to look at who had just taken his item, he could see a woman who was a head shorter than he was, wearing a beret hat with orange hair. Wait, that's my item, Ray said, and no one takes my things. Chapter 47, Panya Wanderer What is with all these people getting on my nerves today, Ray's thought as he looked at the woman by his side. She hadn't even turned her head after he said those words and was completely ignoring him. Is everyone in this world like this or what? And I thought Alterian was bad. Wait, I want that item, Ray's called out, but he didn't know what to do next. He had no coins, all he had were his words, and he wasn't exactly the best speaker when it came to this situation. Young man, are you going to pay me or what? The shopkeeper asked. I was hoping I could maybe do some jobs and work for it, Ray said with a smile on his face. She immediately turned to the girl and held out her hand, to which the other person proceeded to hand the coins over, pulling them out from a rather odd purse. It looked like an obese round bird that when squeezed its yellow beak would open up. After the coins were handed over, the black earring was now in Charlotte's possession, in a nice small square-shaped box. Wait, Ray's called out. Now that the earring was in her possession, he could only hope to do to her what he originally planned to do with the shopkeeper. I need that earring, it's a present for my sister, and she said that I needed to get that exact one. Charlotte proceeded to look at Ray's in the face for a few seconds, before a smirk appeared. What did you say to me before? No one takes my things. Charlotte repeated. Well, it appears that this belongs to me, and no one takes my things. Just as she had finished her sentence, a small kid around eight years old reached out and pulled at her purse that was by her side, snatching it off from her belt and immediately ran through the crowds of people. It was clearly one of the beggar children, the same type that Ray's had seen when he first had appeared here. My money! Charlotte shouted with her hand reaching out, but no one cared. The kid was fast and swift, and even she knew that it would be impossible to catch him. But for Ray's, he saw an opportunity. If I get you your purse back, will you give me that earring? Ray's asked. Charlotte looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Does this idiot really think he can catch a kid like that? If he could do something like that, then he should at least be able to have ten coppers on him, right? Regardless, she thought that it might be best for her to humor him. All right, fine. Just go ahead and... Ray's had already started running after the kid, away from her sight, when she finished her last words. Try. She had seen him running relatively fast through the crowds of people, avoiding them. It was quite the sight to see, and even Ray's was impressed with himself. 
where people's footsteps would be, their bodies, he could predict it all, and he could see the kid continuing to run through the crowd, spinning around, and he was slowly starting to catch up. While swiftly avoiding people, Reyes could see himself getting closer and closer to the kid. He was nearly there, until someone had walked dead straight ahead of him, crossing his path to go over to the food stall. Move, Reyes shouted. He was running too fast to avoid a collision. Hearing the words, the youngster, cloaked in dark red clothing, turned to see the white-haired boy. I said, move out of the way. Reyes shouted as he shoved the young man touching his shoulder and pushed him to the side. During the chase, Reyes didn't realize how much adrenaline was running through his body and the fact that he was even powering his steps with a bit of chi. He had used chi on the bystander, causing them to be thrown right into the stall. The young man had crashed into the food stall, breaking it apart, while liquid from the cooking pot spilled on top of him. Arr! The man screamed in pain from the hot food, and quickly jumped up and down trying to get as much food off of him as quickly as possible. That white-haired bustard, does he want to die? The young man shouted. Who was it? I'll make sure he gets ten times the payback for this. With anger, steam was almost coming out from his ears, but there was one feature that he remembered, and that was the white hair. Wait a second, white hair? Haven't I seen him before? After the small incident that Reyes was blissfully unaware he had created, he had managed to catch up to the kid, lifting him up by the back of his shirt and snatching the purse out of his hands. Sorry, kid, I know you're only doing this to survive. You're not at fault, Reyes said. He knew the kid would run off as soon as he put him down, for fear that he would hand him over to someone from the clan. So instead, with one hand, Reyes flicked a silver coin in the air. The kid almost on instinct managed to catch it. Take that and feed yourself, Reyes said. And next time, try going after the fat ones. They won't be able to run after you, and they sure have enough money to feed themselves. With those words of wisdom passed along, Reyes let go of the kid, who immediately ran off. Looking behind him, Reyes had noticed that there was a commotion going on. Did I push someone? Reyes looked at his hand. I think I did. It might be best to go the long way round. With this in mind, Reyes decided to take a different route on his way back to where he last was. With the purse in his hand, the thought of just taking it with him had come up, but he wanted the earring. There weren't going to be many chances to get an item like that, but money in the future would be easy to get, especially if he found a way to sell the power stones. It didn't take long for him to find the girl still waiting. Reyes waved the bag in the air in front of her with a smug smile on his face. I had no clue that you were a Pagna warrior, Charlotte said. I've never met one that was so poor before. How did you know I was a warrior? He asked. You can tell just from what you did then. You move far faster than the others. Are you with the Red Brigade clan then? She asked while attempting to take her purse back, but Reyes pulled away just in time and held his hand out. She quickly knew what he wanted and placed the box with the earring inside in his hand, exchanging items with each other. I'm not with any clan, Reyes answered, which was the truth. What the? There's less money in here. Did you steal some? Charlotte shouted. No, Reyes answered. I gave some to that kid so he could eat for the day. You seem to have enough to fill your stomach and a few more, so why not let that kid not suffer for a moment? Charlotte closed her purse and let out a sigh as she placed it under her hat on the top of her head this time. If I wanted to, I could have just taken the whole thing and left. I have no reason to lie, Reyes continued. It's rare to meet a wanderer, but then again, that might be the reason why you're so poor. We could use someone like you. If you need some work, then head over to a pawn shop called Rock Cliff, Charlotte said, turning around and heading in a completely different direction from Ray's. Wait, the pawn shop? Isn't that the same pawn that I... Well, it might be best to avoid her completely then. But why would she be in the pawn shop? Is she with the other two? Just who is she? Ray's thought. Now that she was gone, though, Ray's had a large smile on his face as he flicked a silver coin in the air. I'm just charging some tax for my services, that's all, and you had to be punished a little for taking my item. Miss 1 N Chapter 48 Elite Grade Item
It didn't seem like Reyes was going to solve his money problems anytime soon, but he did have an avenue, as long as his potions worked, or even if they didn't, he thought that there might be a way for him to utilize Dame. Asking for coins up front would be strange, since Dame believed he came from another world. So those coins would be useless in his world, but he could still use him to get precious items. Heck, he didn't even mind if he got him more manuals and taught him more moves, now that he had a dantian full of chi. If possible, Reyes wanted to get everything he needed done in town today, and he wanted to leave no traces behind. After his encounter with the strange girl with the beret hat, he thought it was better if others didn't see his face directly. When he was in a quiet and secluded alleyway, he activated the robe and lifted up the hood. After he had managed to acquire four bottles that each sold for one copper coin each, it left him now with 96 copper coins. Relatively soon after this, he decided that he also needed to buy a purse and had bought one that was purple in color and had a snake pattern on the outside along with a tongue that would pop out. It seemed that these specially designed purses were popular. The purse had cost him a further three coins, leaving him with 93 coins. With the coins in the purse, he could now place the whole purse into his robe to store it, and now there would be no incident like what had occurred before. Reyes knew full well that if he was to return to the temple, he would be ridden with chores, which would distract him from what he needed to do. He could continue to do things at night, but one of these days he was bound to get caught, which left him in search of an inn. He wasn't planning to stay the night, but still had to pay the day fee, which was a total of eight copper coins, leaving him with 85. He was quickly seeing the money he had taken going down. Judging by what that girl said before, I wonder how much Pagna warriors get paid, or those that are part of a clan, Ray's thought. She did say she was surprised to see that I didn't even have ten coins, and considering my body, I guess they do eat a lot as well. Now in the room, Reyes was preparing a number of things. First, he had a piece of chalk in his hands. This was something he had taken from the temple, as the children would often draw on the grounds as a way to play with something. He placed three crystals on the ground and started to draw a formation around them. A two-star mage that can perform two-star enchantments and has a good quality item with a high-grade crystal, can obtain higher enchanted items, and with my dark magic effect, it could even turn out to be an elite-grade enchanted item. The enchanted items all had different rankings based on their effects. Common, uncommon, rare, elite, unique, mythical, legendary, god. The current items Ray's had were all at the uncommon level, the ring as well as the robe he was wearing. The potions would be borderline rare, but of course with dark magic enchanted items there would always be a curse. Saying all of this in his head, there was clearly a problem. He had everything, apart from a higher grade crystal. Rays had only a level 1 power stone, as they called them in the world of Pagna. What he needed was a level 2 power stone, and there was a way to do this without fighting a stronger beast. A formation could be cast, combining two level 1 stones together. However, a stone would be used in the process. So to create a level 2 stone, one would need three level 1 stones. This special formation could only be used to increase the level of a stone by one, and no higher. On top of that, the higher the level of stone, the less chance there was of the whole thing working. So this was something that Reyes would only try with the basic level 1 stones he had. Flicking his fingers with his magic, the formation lit up, and all three of the stones started to vibrate and moved colliding into each other. A bright glow appeared, and the bee-colored crystal had become slightly more transparent in color, a sign that it was a success. That's good. If it failed, I wasn't going to try that again. I need one stone to feed this robe, and one to head back and meet Dame, Ray's thought, so he really only had four stones to create items with. This wasn't originally part of his plan, but after finding the higher quality item in the market, it was something that he just had to do. Although he was enjoying his new body and his martial arts, magic was still his trump card in this world and the others. Drawing a new formation, this one took a lot more time compared to the last. Formations got more complicated the higher the tier of enchantment, with some taking even several days to finish. 
This was why there were some mages that only focused on enchantment, and it was quite rare to have an all-arounder like Ray's. Finishing the formation off, Ray's summoned the box out from his robe and pulled out the earring, placing it on the ground. It was the same as before, and with the level 2 power stone, the new magic ritual was beginning. Oh in. Oh in. It lit up, and so did the ring in the center. Haha, ha, this has to be an elite grade item. This is going to be great. As the magic lit up and the crystal's power was forming with the earring, in the corner of the room, behind rays, electric sparks were appearing. They were coming and going, and small portals the size of a fist were opening up. Breaking through the portals, a small black tentacle was leaking through, wriggling about. It's complete, Rays said, and the magic around the circle had died down. At the same time, the sparks and portals behind him had disappeared. Tell me the effects of this item, Rays asked, and the dark magic moved like a whisper. Soon, the dark magic came back with a text in front of him, an elite-grade cursed black earring. A powerful curse has been left on this earring. The effects have been locked by the curse and the owner can fulfill the following requirements. The earring must be worn by the user, and they must not take off the earring within the full course of 72 hours. During this period, the user must not sleep, eat, or drink. If the user fails to complete the task or does one of the above during this period of time, a curse will be placed. Failure to complete the task will result in the user losing all of their senses. They will slowly go blind, lose their sense of taste, sense of hearing, and sense of smell. If a new person is to wear the earring, the 72 hours will restart. Chapter 49. Sealed Items Ray's mumbled to himself, careful not to express his anger too much for the other people who might be staying at the inn. He just couldn't help himself after seeing the effects of the earring. Out of all the possible outcomes, he was hoping that this type of condition didn't come up, but it was most likely so due to the level of the curse. However, he had managed to create a sealed item. Picking it up off the ground, Ray's placed it back in its case and closed it while he let out a big deep sigh. What Ray's had just created was known as a sealed item. In most cases, finding a sealed item might be a joyous occasion because when unsealed, the grade of the enchanted item might actually be higher than what it currently was. The current grade of the item, an elite item, was more to do with how tough the conditions were to unbreak the seal. The condition wasn't so much of a problem, but because it was a cursed item, now it meant if a person were to fail in breaking the condition, the user itself would be cursed as well. The reason for his frustration was due to him being so conflicted. He had even opened up the case again and was ready to grab the earring and place it on his ear, stopping a few centimeters away. If I break the seal, I could end up with a mythical rank item, Ray's thought to himself. The highest three grades of items, mythical, legendary, and god, weren't usually something someone could just enchant. These items were often ones that were found through the portals in other worlds. There were cases where extremely high-level crystals, along with rare treasures, were used to create these levels of items. To top it off, they would have to come up with their own formations of enchantment, since enchanting at that high of a level, mages would tend to keep those secrets to themselves. For this to happen, one would have to find multiple things that aligned and needed to put in the hard work, whereas just finding the top-graded items through expeditions was more likely, but in some cases were just as dangerous. They tended to be in dimensions that many had lost their lives in. Mythical items and above were items that made one almost have godlike powers, Entire corporations, guilds, and countries would fight over them. Which was why one of the Grand Magus who was able to craft mythical and above items was a figure that could do whatever he wished. Idor, the noble one, as they called him. Somewhat the leader of the Grand Magus and the one that put out the hit on his head. Just thinking about him, dark magic was swirling around the room, and Ray's eyes were turning a shade darker, his pupils expanding. N. N. 1. As an example of how powerful these items could be, the book Rays had found in one of the dimensions was at the legendary rank, and that was the book that contained the ritual that allowed him to transmigrate into the body he was in now. There's also a chance that this could be a complete dud. There is no guarantee, 
and it could just be an elite-grade item, which is good but not good enough for the risk, Ray's thought. Staying awake for 72 hours is three days. It's not an impossible task, but extremely difficult. After the second day of no sleep, one would start to hallucinate. It would be hard to tell a dream from reality. It would be hard to process nearly anything or do basic tasks. The idea of trying to fight against one's natural body to stay awake would be a difficult one without something looming over their head. To top it off, there are more conditions, no food or water, to make the mind descend into further madness. If I attempted this, how would I even explain to Kron or the others what I was trying to do? They would immediately send me to the hospital or even knock me out, forcing me to sleep. Lastly, putting myself in this state, I would be incredibly weak, and while I have not experienced any new assassination attempts, being in that state would just put a larger target on my back. I don't even have to mention why it's bad, if I we, read a fail in succeeding in breaking the seal either. In the end, it was just too much of a big risk to try, at least for now. Placing the ring away in the robe, he had also placed the robe away and decided to keep the remaining three power stones, one to feed the robe, the other to head to the other dimension, and lastly, one to sell if he ever managed to figure out a way to do that. Since Reyes was leaving the town, he had placed the robe away, and he felt that he had done what he needed to do here. It was a shame that the situation had turned out to be a dud, but Reyes had time. He was in a new body, and he had already been improving by leaps and bounds. Luck wouldn't always go the way he wanted. The town had multiple exits and paths that led to different areas, through different forests and vast lands that took people to other cities and areas. For Reyes, he was leaving out of the west exit, which was placed on a slight uphill. This path led through a forest and the temple that was up ahead. Not many people left through the west exit, since they would have to climb up a large mountain to get to the other side. They would usually just take the north or south exit that would allow them to bypass the mountain and go wherever it was they needed to be. Walking down the path, the town was now around a mile away. The rustling of leaves was heard, and stepping on the path in front of Ray's was a young boy dressed head to toe in dark red cloth. The only part of his clothing that was a different color was his basic dark brown boots, which went somewhat up his shin. Not many people wore them. In fact, the only people that Ray's knew who wore them were those from the clan. The fact that you have popped out in front of me means you have some business with me? Ray's asked. But I do not know you, so why are you standing in my way? Chapter 50 Dark Gift Ray's fingers were twitching slightly, and he was wondering if this was a situation where he would need to use his magic. The uniform he recognized well because he had seen it before. These were the clothes of the Red Brigade, the ones that were disciples. The young man in front of him looked to be the same age as Ray's. He was one of the students who were training to enter the Pangya Academy on behalf of the clan. I knew you would be here, the kid said. I remember seeing your white hair before. You're one of the kids that visited the clan base from the temple, so I knew you would stop here. So are you ready to apologize for what you did? The disciple started to point at himself and showed his stained clothing. The red uniform was stained with an odd brown color that went from his chest down his legs. You want me to apologize because you shot yourself? Ray's asked. Are you crazy? The disciple's fist was shaking. Being a disciple of the clan, everyone treated him well and with respect in the town, and being one of the talented students, even the teachers and elders treated him nicely. If he wanted, he could have asked one of them to find the person in question and get them to apologize directly in front of him. This was what being a Pagna warrior meant. Those who were powerful and skillful, showing potential, weren't just treated as if they were above others. They were above others. Men. 1. N. I gave you a chance to rectify the situation. My name is Von Kloff the disciple declared. As the disciple of the Red Brigade clan, I will rightfully deal punishment. You, who has attacked a disciple for no reason and show no remorse, is the same as an attack on the clan itself. Ray's knew where this was going, and he couldn't quite believe it, above others just because they were stronger. This world, it was no different than the last one he left. 
He swung his hand, ready to use his magic, until he had seen Vaughn shift his feet and was directly in front of him. Then, with the palm of his hand, Vaughn hit Ray's right in the stomach. His body folded inward, and it felt like all of his organs wanted to explode out of his mouth. He was fast, extremely fast. I couldn't even react with my magic in time. Ray's attacks were strong, but what was the point if he couldn't hit his target? From the single hit, his legs were shaking, and his back was hunched. You can still stand. I guess that just means I have to punish you further. Vaughn had moved again, too fast for Ray's to use his magic, so instead he had decided to use the two-step shift, but had done so backwards. The fist that had been thrown by Vaughn had missed this time. Interesting, so you can use some skills after all. I guess you have a good chi base. No wonder why you could still stand up, but I am one of the best students. Vaughn proceeded to do the two-step shift, closing the space between the two right after Ray's had done it, and he could suddenly feel his whole head being grabbed. Before he knew it, Ray's head was flung down, and a knee was lifted, hitting him right in the face. Ray's whole body was knocked in the air before it fell to the ground, lying on his back. Your filth who doesn't even know the way the world works. A no-name is not the same as us Pagna warriors. Vaughn then went ahead and stood on top of both of Ray's arms. It might have looked like no big deal, but due to using his power of chi, it felt like a 200 kilogram man was now standing on him. It was impossible for him to lift his hands. Don't, don't touch me. Ray's shouted as he screamed and desperately tried to move his body, wiggling his legs and arms but Vaughn quickly kicked them behind him, making him stop before placing his feet spread apart on top of his arms again. I could see you were trying something with those hands of yours. Too bad you won't get to try it. Now, someone dirtied my clothes, so don't you think it's only fair that I at least do the same to you? Looking down at the struggling Vaughn, he spat right on his face. Not once, but three times he spat again and again, spreading it out on Ray's. Ray's was grinding his teeth, but from the initial hit, he was really hurt. The chi inside him had been disrupted, and he was finding it hard to focus at all. But in that moment, he did manage to do something. A flicker of darkness surrounded his right hand. He grasped onto something tight, and it didn't go unnoticed. What's that? Vaughn said. Is there something you're holding onto? Maybe something you care about? Vaughn lifted his foot and stomped on Ray's hand, his fingers being crushed by the weight and out popped a box. What's this? Vaughn asked, walking over to the box. Don't touch that! Ray's shouted, getting up and going after the box, to which Vaughn turned around and kicked him in the chin, sending him back again. Ray's laid there on the ground. It was clear from the fight they had just had that Ray's was unable to beat him. He had even thought that even with his magic, it wouldn't have been possible unless he got a lucky hit in. Just as he had been told, even if they were both rank one Pagna warriors, there was a vast difference between the two of them. But there was still an odd smile on his face. Bending down, Vaughn picked up the box and opened it up. He could see the black earring inside. He took the earring out and threw the box to its side. What's this? It's just a stupid earring? Vaughn held it up to the light, but it didn't look like anything special. But for you to have held onto it tightly this whole time, it must mean something to you, right? That's mine. Don't you dare take it, you damn shutbox. Ray's shouted again. From the comments before, it had just reminded Vaughn of the situation that had occurred, and his anger was rising even more. Very well. I won't punish you any more than this. Vaughn smiled. But I shall be taking your precious earring. As punishment, you will have to live with the fact that every time you see me, you will be unable to do anything about taking it back. I shall wear this well for you. Vaughn started to walk back toward the town, not thinking anything about Ray's who had his head sunken in his chest. His shoulders started to shake, and when Vaughn was finally out of sight, he lifted his head, bursting into laughter. Ha! Ray's laughed. Enchanted and sealed items were very special in many ways. For one, people were naturally attracted to them. They would begin to obsess over them due to the leaking power that emitted from the items. Those who didn't practice the use of mana seemed to be even more affected by items, but regardless of that, Ray's knew well that Vaughn would take the item based on his personality. The thing was, 
enchanted items' effects could only appear in front of a mage once they used their magic with the right incantation. However, 